Now, from the studios of Into Tomorrow in Miami, this is ITTV. The way the world shops is rapidly changing these days. Our next guest company is an end-to-end -end digital commerce solution for grocers. So this is something we all need. We all have to eat. Uh, we all, most of us at least, unless you can afford to have someone do it for you, which must be nice, uh, typically shop at a grocery store and get our food and prepare meals and do that sort of thing. Well, the CEO of a company called Store, without the E, store.ai, is Orly Tall. Orly, welcome into tomorrow. Thanks for coming on. How are you? Great, Dave. Thank you for inviting me over. It's our pleasure, and I understand you're joining us from Tel Aviv, so I'm assuming that's where the company is headquartered, yes? We're headquartered in Tel Aviv and in New York. Oh, okay, terrific. So tell me a little bit about the mission as a company, and then let's get into how it is that you help grocers and then how it ultimately helps us as consumers. Sure. So Story AI, as you mentioned, is a customer-first digital commerce uh, solution focused on the grocery industry. Now, our solution includes an e-commerce platform uh, and an advanced fulfillment solution. And what does that mean? It means the app that the picture, pickers are actually using in order to pick your online orders. And together with that, an artificial intelligence a, a engine that powers and personalizes the entire shopping experience. Uh, so we serve more than 200 grocers in multi-geographies in the US, Canada, Israel, um, and anything we develop in the company needs to serve both the benefits of the retailer, but just as much of the end consumers. And, and the fact that these two correlate very highly is, is, is great. Ah, very cool. Now tell me though a little bit early about what does that mean? You say a picking app. Uh, for those of us who I'm assuming it means picking or selecting products, is that what that is? If not, correct me. Precisely. You know, after you after grow after shoppers send out and check out in the in the web in their websites, somebody actually needs to go through the store and pick the order. Oh, okay. And we developed this very sophisticated solution in order to make that very be beneficial for the retailer, but just as much for you know our consumers. So then what's unique about that particular picking app? Uh, because a lot of folks, uh, certainly in the U.S., might be familiar with various companies that will go around and, and collect the items that, as you mentioned, that you have selected from a website. Um, yeah. I know that there's a couple that do it in, in, uh, in our uh, probably more popular Publix supermarkets here in South Florida, for example. Um, right. And you can have folks, I mean, you still do your shopping online, which is good, but then they go and, and obviously pick these particular items, probably without not, not with the exact same finesse that you might do as shopping for your own stuff, but hopefully very similar. I mean, I've watched them in produce. They're, they're feeling the produce and hopefully getting you the better stuff uh, so that you will use them again. So, I mean, there is an incentive for them. But what makes this particular picking app different? Okay. So, let me, t let me try and, 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 and touch on all the friction points. Okay. Uh, because, you know, um, the, the picking is a place where you can create a lot of friction with the customer. And let's talk about um, the out of stock and substitution, which are a huge frustration for online shoppers. Sure. I don't think that the general public is fully aware of how challenging it is to run an accurate inventory in a grocery store. Your average grocery store a uh, supermarket sells 30,000 products and the inventory is constantly changing. So just imagine, it's, it's a huge number of products. So how do we do, deal with that? The, stores, the store AI solution is tightly integrated into the store's uh, point of sale. And so if just imagine that the store just sold five boxes of the Nestle cereal and it's out of stock. We know it, we know it immediately. And what we know how to do is automate, automatically make it disappear from the website until it's back in stock. Oh. So we're prevent, preventing users from buying products that will not be delivered to them. 
you know, from the beginning. Right. Now, the, therefore, the, the friction that you talk about, obviously, is now eliminated because it's not even there. So they're having to then, the, the consumer, it seems, would then have to pick something similar, uh, select a different cereal in, in this example, um, and it would be in stock because you still have it on the site. Precisely. Okay. And, and in addition to that, we provide the picker, the, the person that is actually picking the order, an availability score uh, for each and every order. So when the picker just finished picking, you know, one of the customer's orders, he needs to, uh, he sees the availability score. So let's imagine that he got a 92%. That means that 8% of the order is missing. Now, he's not the only one that sees that score. Also, his manager sees it. Hmm. And if it's below a certain score, the system will prevent the picker from, from completing the order and sending it out to the customer. Um, so ma managers have the ability to monitor the orders before sending it out and doing some quality assurance uh, and, and, that may, and, and, and making sure that they're getting happy customers. So the out of stock is a huge frustration, I think, for all of us as, as shoppers. Oh, for sure. But, but it seems to me that some of the order is better than none of it, right? If you say it, it prevents the picker, uh, what a bizarre job description, but, uh, but obviously it's what it is. Uh, yes. It prevents the picker from completing the order if, it's, if it falls below a certain, thre a certain threshold. It, it seems to me that if I'm the consumer, I'd say, well, at least get me what you can, you know, and I'll work on getting the other stuff somewhere else or, you know, another day or something of that sort, would that not be the case? Exactly. And, and sometimes, you know, and so why do we show that score? Because sometimes, you know, customers are not getting the products they ordered, not because the products are actually not in the store, but because the picker just couldn't find them in the store. Uh, huge stores, huge catalogs. Yeah. So our system navigates the, pick, the, the picker, the shopper, and just like Waze does, you know, like you would, you know, go somewhere mm -hmm. and helps the picker find each and every product quickly and accurately. So, um, so, so you see how this product serves both the retailers and the consumers because high availability scores means that, you know, uh, you know, you get higher customer satisfaction. Oh, okay. um, so, so again, finding the right products and sometimes, you know, just, yeah. You, you, so, mentioned, um, you mentioned that uh, grocery stores have an average of some 30,000 products. I'm, I had no idea. I mean, I think I buy way too much when I go grocery shopping, but <laughs> I, I didn't think in terms of that they have that many products there. And it kind of makes sense, sure, because it might be the same thing, but a different brand. That's another product and, and that kind of thing uh, or categories of products or otherwise. That's a lot of stuff to keep track of. And uh, certainly if your system at store without the E.AI uh, can help them do that. And does it also help to improve efficiency in terms of ordering more next time? Or is it a, a scenario where you're able to maybe track are these seasonal only kinds of things or holiday coming up so you better anticipate more of this, this and this, you know, that kind of stuff. I mean, do you get involved uh, it, to that extent? Of course. And as I mentioned in the beginning, one of the things that we have is a, is a personalization and personalization engine. And that personalization engine serves a few places. So first of all, it influences the entire customer experience, shopping experience. So when the customer shop it checks out, one of the things that the system knows how to do is to suggest all the products that the customer probably forgot to put in the cart based on their purchasing history, based on their lifestyle, even based on their purchasing uh, frequency. Hmm. So let's just imagine that, you know, I'm buying detergent every three weeks and I, and I forgot to put the detergent this week. The system will, will notify me and suggest me to put that detergent and also suggests products that I usually buy that are on sale and, and, and all, all kinds of other suggestions. So that's in terms of enlarging the, you know, the, the, basket, the basket value, but this is, the one, this is one of the most beloved features you know, that of, our, of our customers because they're just becoming more lazy. Say, oh, the system will just remind me. You know? <laughs> they, they, just, they, they just know perfectly. Yeah. And uh, so it's a perfect experience. 
but if we're going back to the fulfillment, to the, the, the picking, uh, you know, picking your order, so um, sometimes products are missing and need to be replaced. Now, the major problem here is that the consumers are getting irrelevant substitutions. And in most cases, they are based on the picker's decision. You know, he's just sitting, he's standing around, uh, you know, in front of the shelf and saying, oh, what should I select? And that shouldn't be the case because he, she don't know my preferences, my yeah. preferences. Yeah. So in these cases, what the product, what, you know, when the product is missing, our system provides the picker with personalized substitutions. And these are tailored for each, for the specific customer uh, the, the picker is, is, is picking for. And um, so, and, and that's of course a whole new ball game. It's, you know, you're getting something that is exactly what you would select if that product was missing. So that's where it sounds like a, a lot of the AI or artificial intelligence plays that important role uh, as part of that machine learning, whether it's my habits, which some people might think, well, gosh, that's really getting private, isn't it? Well, do you want the helpfulness? Which I would, you know, if it's like, well, Dave, you always get peaches. You love peaches, but you didn't put that on your order. Oh, yes, please get me some. Oh, sorry, they're not available now till December, uh, you know, or whatever. But at least it's reminding me of something that I might frequently get, or every time I'm going to the grocery store, I'm getting 2% milk. It's not on your list. Do you not need it? Uh, so that I can see how that could be very, very helpful to the consumer. And then as a result, obviously to the retailer, because they're selling another product that perhaps I forgot, or maybe I'm just being reminded and say, you know what, let me run and check, you know, yes, I do need more milk, you know, whatever. Uh, either way, I can see where that can be very, very handy. Uh, so kudos for you guys on, on doing that. I think the idea of helping the picker is important as well, because yeah, I've seen them in, in the stores, you know, saying, well, I mean, sometimes they'll talk to themselves even, well, I don't, they don't have that. Ah, I hope they like this. You know, well, that's that's not the way to do it, right? Maybe there's a food allergy involved in the other item that they picked, or any number of things, or they just don't like the taste, or they they don't want to buy that brand. You know, they're they're too woke or something. Whatever the case, you know, there are reasons why the customer asked specifically for what they ask for. Uh, so it's good that you guys are able to get into that. I'm wondering though about it. Almost comes up, I think, in, in nearly every interview these days about how the pandemic has, has affected things. Um, how has e-commerce in this case affected the grocery industry? Uh, has it changed dramatically because of COVID-19 pandemic? Well, that's a, that's a great question. So just to set the scene, you know, for years, nothing was really happening in online grocery. Mm -hmm. And it was really a small fraction of the overall business, two to 3%. And actually, grocers were actually reluctant to go online, and for a very good reason. Because their customers, I mean us, we were doing all the hard work, walking through <laughs> the aisles, picking <laughs> the orders, standing in line, paying, and even delivering the goods back home. Sure. So, but 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 COVID has changed the course of events, and today online grocery is crossing the ten percent, and is expected to double itself in the next three in to next uh, three to four years. So yes, wow. there's a, a huge change, and we also sh see a shift in shoppers' behavior. So more customers are becoming hybrid customers, cu customers that are buying online and in the store. Sure. And you know, sure. in the near future, everybody's going to be hybrid. And and I know our retailers are reporting a decrease in in-store visits, hmm. and and customers feel more comfortable with using digital tools. You know, it's 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 like a revolution. Yes. And yes. and even the uh, the average basket value has risen by in in our case with our customers by twenty two percent. So it's nice. so much. And, and I think that the last uh, thing that I'd like to, to, to point out is that there's also a shift in customers' expectations regarding the last mile. Uh, so one hour delivery is suddenly a must, you know? Yes, yeah, we don't uh, want to wait. So we have no patience. It's like, I want my groceries or anything now. Right. <laughs> I remember so, when Amazon used to do that. And then they got to like two or three days and people were like, uh, whatever it is, what it is. Well, they, everybody needs to get back to that. You know, we, we want our stuff now. It's not unrealistic, I don't think. It's, uh, yeah, it's it's going to be very interesting to see how this course of event, you know, uh, yeah. figures out. So um, I'm, I'm very intrigued. 
Good. Personally. Well, terrific. Uh, Orly Tall is the CEO of Store.ai. It's Store without the E. Apparently, the E's were more expensive. Store.ai. And we'll get you there, too, when you visit into tomorrow.com. Orly, thank you for some very interesting insight. Uh, I mean, everything from 30,000 items in the average grocery store to only 2 or 3% were doing it online. Uh, and that certainly, one would expect, increasing more and more and certainly will increase more. And I also get the fact that retailers want you in the store if you can, if you want, if they can get you there, because you're going to buy more. I mean, how many times we might say, well, I need three or four items, so online we're going to click, click, click and buy. But if we're in the store and we're passing other items, oh, that looks good, or this is on sale, or, oh, I'm in the mood, you know, never shop hungry, right? Uh, <laughs> but you end up with more stuff. And of course, now they're also still making us do the work by self-checkout, but that's a whole other show, a whole other interview. But thank you so much for spending a few minutes with us from Tel Aviv and, and shedding some really cool light on this issue. Dave, it was a pleasure. Have a great day. You thank too. You. Oh, thank you very much. Store, S-T-O-R dot A-I is the website, as in artificial intelligence. And of course, visit us at intotomorrow.com. You'll see the interview with Orly and, of course, the link to their site. I'm Dave Graveline, bringing you further Into Tomorrow. There's much more to come. Stay tuned right here on the Advanced Media Network.